Today we're taking a look at MSYS2, which is a tool and an environment for building and running uh, and installing native Windows software as if we were working on Linux. Um, we're not going to be setting up anything like WSL2 or installing Linux or anything of that sort. We're going to run through how MSYS2 works and I'll explain to you some of the details about why you might want to use this and how it differs from other things. So let's check it out. The first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the msys2.org website uh, where you'll find the installer over here if you click on getting started. Uh, in fact, I think this is the default tab. So just uh, right click and save this file somewhere uh, and we're going to go ahead and install it. Once you have the installer downloaded, go ahead and run that. Hit next on the welcome screen and choose the folder where you want to install it. This is where everything goes. This is where all of the utilities, uh, your home directory, the configuration files, everything is going to be in this core folder. Uh, also, when you install software using Pac-Man, uh, which I'll show you how to do later on, all of that is going to be saved in the various environments that uh, MSYS2 is going to install. So you can just go ahead and click next here unless you have a reason to change that folder. Now, I can't continue forward with this installation because I already have it installed, but uh, there's not much to it. Just hit next, it'll install everything. And then it's going to set up a number of start menu shortcuts for launching uh, any of the various environments that MSYS2 uh, provides. And if you go to your start menu and you scroll down to MSYS2 after you're done installing, what you'll find is, if I can find it, is this MSYS2 folder, which has a bunch of shortcuts for launching the different versions of MSYS2. Um, you're going to choose any one of these, depending on what you want to work on and how you want to work. Chances are you're going to use this one, and I'll explain why in a little bit. But basically, you're just going to launch uh, one of these shells, and you're faced with a, a Linux prompt, the way you would on any Linux, Unix-like uh, environment and you can just run it and uh, or run any command as you normally would. The next thing that you're going to need to be aware of is the fact that MSYS2 has uh, a few different environments available depending on the type of tool chain that you want to use. Uh, so if you hit the um, documentation section and go to environments you can look at a more in-depth um, description of what these environments are but in a nutshell there's different compiler tool chains. So this explains it to you right here. So the tool chain is, you know, MSYS2 is the base one that all of them use. So you're not going to use this one uh, for the most part, uh, but it's based on GCC. And then there's these other ones like UCRT64, MingGW64, and 32. Those are both GCC based here, including this one. Uh, and then there's a Clang tool chain, uh, which lets you, and even this one, I think it can let you cross compiler if I'm uh, cross compile for ARM64, if I'm not mistaken. But um, uh, you can actually even use an LLVM tool chain if you prefer to use Clang uh, and that tool chain. Uh, the other thing that you need to be aware of is the C and C++ runtime libraries that uh, each of these environments will use. And this is where if you're just looking to do some uh, C or C++ development uh, and build some native Windows applications uh, and you're not doing anything specific or out of the ordinary, chances are you're going to either use MingGW64 or UCRT64. And the differences between those is that they use different C runtime libraries. UCRT stands for Universal C Runtime, and uh, the MingGW64 library uses the Microsoft Visual C++ Runtime library. Now, the difference is outlined a little further down here, where uh, the MSV uh, CRT uh, versus UCRT section is. And uh, basically, what the only thing you really need to be aware of is that the MSV CRT uh, library is available on all versions of Windows as stated here, but it because of backwards compatibility reasons, there are certain features missing. You know, it doesn't support the UTF-8 uh, locale. Uh, it's not C99 compatible. Uh, a few things like that. You can go ahead if you have specifics or things that uh, that you require. You're probably going to want to take a look at this section, and depending on what you're building, you're go you're going to want to be aware of these differences. Now, the UCRT runtime is much more compatible and much more modern. Uh, but as stated here, it only ships by default on Windows 10 and uh, for older versions, you're going to have to provide it yourself uh, or make sure the user has to go out and install it. Now, for anybody that's running WSL, wondering why you would use this over uh, WSL, there's a big fundamental difference between the two. 
WSL is actually installing and virtualizing a full Linux distribution for you. And any software that you install and run is going to be actually Linux software compiled and packaged for Linux. Uh, the difference is that because Microsoft does such a good job making WSL feel so seamless uh, inside of uh, Windows, it actually feels like you're installing Windows software. But of course, as you probably already know, uh, you are running native Linux applications inside of WSL too, and you can't take those out and run them under Windows. You, you're, if, you, if you were to write C or C++ code, you would be building a Linux application. And if you wanted to distribute it uh, inside of Windows or send it to other Windows users, you can't, of course. Uh, the difference with uh, MSYS2 is that it's actually providing you uh, native versions of those libraries and and tool chains that you would use under Linux to develop C and C++ software for the most part, uh, but you're actually uh, running them under Windows and it's providing a, a small layer on top that, that is allowing uh, even Linux software uh, that would otherwise not be, you wouldn't be able to compile uh, with something like Visual Studio, you can actually, uh, it, it will actually in a way emulate, provide a certain layer of compatibility so that it makes things what's called POSIX compliant, meaning uh, certain facilities and, um, and features of a Unix-like operating system now become available to you. So what this means is that if you install GCC, CMake, and set up your development environment inside of MSYS, and you build an application, uh, you're actually building a native Windows application that you can then take and share with another user. Uh, you're not building something that requires WSL, but you're actually building Windows software. And uh, you can actually take that, send it to another person, and provided they have the correct uh, C++ or C runtime library available, uh, chances are they do, um, because any any application, even one built with Visual Studio, uh, will require the Visual C++ runtime, uh, for example. So uh, you can ship that application to another Windows user and they can run it. They don't have to install WSL and install a Linux distribution and do any of that stuff that you would if you were actually compiling C, C or C++ code under WSL. The next thing I want to show is how you can find and install software within MSYS. Uh, the first thing you might want to do is search for some software. So in our case here, uh, I'm going to run the uh, UCRT version of, or the UCRT environment of MSYS. Uh, we have that open. <clears throat> and the way you install software is using Pac-Man. So anybody that's using Arch Linux will be familiar with Pac-Man and you do Pac-Man-S to install a piece of software. Now, um, if you want to find software, you can just go straight to the package index here and you could search for any, any package that uh, you want to install. So in the case of GCC, you can come here, hit GCC and it'll show you uh, the search results. Um, here you'll notice it says base packages. That means these are for the base system, so the base MSYS. Uh, you might want to switch that to packages and then search again, which will show you all versions of packages for all environments. So if you're running UCRT like we are, uh, like I showed you here, then you're going to want to install the UCRT version of GCC. So you can copy that and then you could run Pacman dash s and then paste that now i've already got that installed so it says reinstalling i don't want to reinstall it for no reason so i'm going to type no but that is how you would install uh, you could also you could also do pacman dash r and paste oops of course You could also do pacman-r and the package name, and that will that is how you uh, uninstall a package. Now, I'm not going to uninstall uh, because A, things depend on this, and B, I don't want to, uh, especially given the, uh, the error message that just popped up. You'd have to, uh, you can do pacman-r cascade and then paste that. So that'll actually delete 
uh, the package that I'm trying to delete and any other packages that depend on that package. So uh, again, I don't want to do this, but just so you know, uh, that is uh, that is the difference between R and RC. Uh, R deletes the package. RC will delete anything that depends on the package you're trying to delete. So it's actually recursive, and it will. Uh, you could end up with deleting a, a whole ton of software that you don't even want to delete. So I don't recommend doing this. Uh, but just so you know. The next thing I want to show you is how to use the Windows terminal and set up a profile in here so that you can launch MSYS2 directly in here. If you're not using this, I highly recommend you go and grab it from the Microsoft Store. Uh, it's a much nicer uh, terminal emulator. Uh, you can have your command prompt in here, your PowerShell. If you've got WSL, you've got Ubuntu in there. Uh, you just open another tab and now you've got you know command prompt here and you've got Ubuntu here. and um, it's, it's just a much, much nicer interface. It looks nicer and everything. So, uh, we're going to set up a profile in here and we'll, um, and we'll launch MSYS2 with the appropriate environment. And I'll show you how to do that right now. If we go back to the MSYS.org webpage and we go to documentation and then terminals, we'll find there's a section for windows terminal. Uh, and they provided a sample JSON that we can use to put together the profile inside of Windows Terminal. So if we go back here and uh, we've got Windows Terminal open, click the, we click the down arrow, go to settings, and then add new profile, new empty profile. Uh, let's give it a name. We're gonna call it msys2. And for command line, let's just paste the one that they provided here so we don't have to go looking for the files. Now, this assumes that you installed MSYS2 in C MSYS64. So be sure to make sure that your path is correct. Uh, but if you're not sure, you can just actually go browse, go to your MSYS64 folder, wherever that is, and double click uh, MSYS2 underscore shell dot CMD. And then all you have to do is just tack on these arguments here and you're good. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to set is your home directory. That makes sure that when you actually fire up uh, the actual terminal, it'll open your home directory rather than some C uh, or some directory or rather it'll be, uh, if it uses this by default, it'll be C users and then your username, which we don't want. We want your home directory that's within MSYS64 so that uh, things work correctly. So we can save that. Uh, and then if we click the down arrow here, we'll see this is the new profile we just added. If we click that, now we actually have our prompt. And this is the same thing that we had inside of uh, the other terminal, but now it's running as a tab inside here. You can also go back to your settings and then you can choose an icon. So we're running the UCRT64 environment here. So why don't we go ahead and use that icon, UCRT64. These are all inside the root MSYS64 folder. So we'll do that. And then what else is there? Uh, you can see they're providing a font here, which we're not gonna change the default font. We can just hit save there. And then we have this terminal and we're good. And you can open as many tabs as you want and get all the benefits of running it in here. So I hope that helps. Now that we've got GCC installed and we've got our profile inside of Windows Terminal, I'm going to show you how we can uh, build a small C++ application in here. Uh, and we're going to run it from inside of MSYS and then we're going to run it from inside of Windows. And I'll show you uh, how this application that we built inside of MSYS is actually a Windows application that we can run natively. Uh, and I'm also going to show you where the files, uh, where this home directory is actually stored because that's pretty important. So in here, I have this little uh, source file called myapp.cpp. And I'm just going to quickly show you. Uh, this is the version of GCC that we installed earlier. And it's the same as this one. They're just aliases of one another. Uh, so if I, or actually I don't think they're aliases in here because there's no symbolic links. Uh, they're, I think they're copies of each other, but it's the same application regardless. So if I compile that source file uh, and then I run it, we've got hello world, which is what this application 
is actually doing. Uh, we're just including IO stream and printing a hello world. So we've compiled it in here. And now, uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to quickly show you if we if you go to your installation folder, and the home folder in there, and then your username. Uh, this is exactly where we just were inside of uh, this folder. Right? These are the files that are in here. We've got myapp.cpp, and this is the file that we just created. These dot files are, uh, if you're not a Unix or Linux user of some sort, uh, these dot files are just hidden files that are normally hidden from view inside of, uh, inside of Linux. But if I go lsal, it's going to show me all those same files, which means all files long list uh, with all the details and permissions and all that. Um, so just something to, uh, to remember there, but basically this is the application that we just, um, that we just compiled. And if we go inside here, which is that same folder, right? Uh, MC 64, and then my username, if I just run a.exe, you'll see that, uh, this application that we just built here actually runs just fine, uh, inside of the windows command prompt. So it's clearly a windows application. The other thing I quickly want to show you is how to update MSYS2. Um, it's, you have to treat it the same way you treat a Linux distribution. Uh, if you're not, again, if you're not a Linux user, uh, every once in a while you would run a, a package update, a system update, and uh, that will bring all of your software up to date. So the way you do that in here uh, is um, using Pacman. Again, if you're familiar with Pacman, uh, you would know that you would write pacman s y y u. This will update all of your repository indexes and do an actual package update. Uh, and when you do that, it's actually pulling in all the latest uh, package repo indexes. Uh, and then it's actually doing the system upgrade. So here it's telling me my bash and my actual pacman utility need to be updated. Uh, now I, I updated like two days ago or yesterday rather. Uh, so this is brand new stuff, but if I just hit yes here, um, we can see that it's installing some software and that's it. Uh, yes. So this is going to restart uh, that process because we updated bash, but if I just rerun that, that's running that same profile and there's our program again. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please like, and subscribe and see you again soon.